Another attack on the Abuja Kaduna rail line as terrorists invade Gidan rail station. And the People's Democratic Party wants to distort President Buhari's achievements and to misinform Nigerians. This is coming from Minister of Information, Al Haji Lai Mohammed. This is Plus Politics, and I'm Kofi Bartels. Bandits have launched yet another attack on Gidan Station on the Abuja Kaduna rail line. The attack occurred shortly after the entourage of the Minister of Transportation, Rotimi Amechi, passed through on their way to Rijana to conduct an inspection to determine the extent of the damage caused by the attack that occurred on Monday night. According to reports, a police car was set on fire while the Nigeria Railway Corporation personnel stationed in the area had to flee for their life. It was also alleged that the terrorists blew a rail track and disrupted the movement of a train heading to Abuja. Security personnel were, however, able to bring the situation under control. Joining us to discuss this is former Senator Sheo Sani, who represented Kaduna Central. Joining us to discuss this is Senator Sheho Sani, former Senator representing Kaduna Central Senatorial District. Sorry, let me take that again. Go down, go down, sorry. Go down, go down. Keep going, keep going, keep going. No, no, no. Go. Okay. Joining us to discuss this is Senator Sehu. Joining us to discuss this is Senator Sheho Sani, former senator representing Kaduna Central. Senator, thank you very much for your time and thanks for joining us. Uh, thank you for having me. All right. Um, uh, uh, are you surprised um, at the fact that we've had a second attack by these people we're calling terrorists in under 24 hours? Well, I cannot be surprised, and I'm not surprised, uh, because uh, the bandits have been operating freely between Kaduna and Abuja. And the large expanse of land, the savannah land between Niger and Kaduna State, have simply become their operational base. All right, Senator, are you there, please? Uh, the attack on Kaduna Airport, rather, the, the very day they attacked the train, in the daytime, they ransacked and sacked about 40 villages within the Kaduna Niger vicinity. And thousands of people have moved to uh, the Jere town, which is next to Abuja, as refugees. And as such, they also launched an attack on the Zuma barracks, which is uh, in Suleja, in Niger state. So they have been operating freely. And uh, up to now, the government, I would dispute here, uh, they walked. They moved in droves of two, three, three hundred of motorbikes holding AK-47. And they have been achieving all their goals, uh, one of which was the blowing up of the rail track. And we shouldn't uh, be surprised that this, this, was, this was the second time this rail track was attacked. The last one on Octo in October last year, which I happened to be one of the passengers, they attacked the, the rail line, but by the grace of God, we escaped. And uh, since then, the government has not taken any serious measure other than repairing the rail track. Uh, the trains doesn't have sensors that will detect whether an explosive or any object is ahead of it. So they have been using, uh, initially they have been using cows, uh, guards, cattle, to block the, the rail track, but when they found out that couldn't uh, hold back the trains, they, they resorted to the use of explosives. So I wasn't uh, surprised, because up to today, uh, the government has not been able to succeed in, in exterminating the, the, the group that has been unleashing mayhem within Kaduna and Niger State. Uh, don't, don't, don't fail to, uh, you can recall, that this was the same group that learned attacks and killed uh, 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 and I kidnapped students of Greenville University. They also kidnapped the students of Federal College of Forestry. They also kidnapped the Baptist 
Bethel Baptist uh, School in Kaduna. So they have been operating, and up to today, there has never been any action in terms of taking the war to the camps of the terrorists. Mm -hmm. Indeed, uh, it's, it's, it's uh, well documented that you narrowly, uh, Senator Shehusani, escaped with your life uh, last year, about six months ago, if I'm not mistaken, in that initial um, terrorist attack on on the uh, the Kaduna Abuja rail rail track. Um, are there any similarities? Can you relate when you've listened uh, to the accounts of those who were victims, the uh, survivors? Uh, can you relate with some of the things that they have been, you know, been sharing with us as their experience uh, from Monday night? Well, um, it will interest you to know that the attack happened in the very spot, the very spot the last attack happened on in October. It also happened to the same train that was scheduled to, to, to move in the, in, the, in the night train, 6 p.m. night train. So almost everything is the same. The difference is that uh, this one was tragic. It was successful on the hands of the terrorists. They have been able to kill, to injure, and to kidnap people. In the last one, it wasn't possible because uh, somehow the, the, pilot, the, the train engineers, the drivers of the train, managed to move the train to the next station. Uh, so, but in this time, uh, they succeeded uh, in a serious country. When what happened last October actually happened, uh, what's supposed to have been done uh, would have been to, to make sure that uh, uh, necessary steps are taken in terms of protecting the rail track. And the very spot where this, uh, this explosion happened, uh, well, it's, it's known by everyone to be the bandit's route. That's why they always move from Kaduna to San Francisco. So uh, it, it, we have not done what we need to do as a country, and security agencies have not done what they need to do. We couldn't have been here. If you Google, you will see that there was once a promise or a pledge being made that helicopters of the Nigerian Air Force would be used to escort the 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 the, 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 the trades uh, which they started at a certain point it was abandoned so uh, no one can say that this is uh, unexpected rather it was an avoidable uh, tragedy hmm. uh, what, what, what would you say to the fact that uh, just about 24 hours after the attack on Monday night we woke up to hear of another attack on Tuesday on the same rail track in the same Kaduna state and that is what I'm telling you. Uh, from from our own sources, we are saying that this what they did was simply the beginning, and it's the same group, the same group that attacked the train. It's the same group that launched attack on uh, at the Gidan uh, station. So it has always been the case: they launch attack, they kidnap, and then people have to seek for way of communicating with them to pay ransom and get their own out. Uh, when have you had? When have you had? that our security forces have ever rescued uh, the hostages that were kidnapped within Kaduna and, and Niger Aziz. It never happened. So, uh, and you wonder, Kaduna and Niger Aziz are not a mountainous areas. They are also not creeks. It's a flat land savanna. And how can, how can two, 300 people on motorbikes be moving in a plain land and we don't have the technology or the intelligence to detect these people and, and take the war to them. That is that, that is very unfortunate. Answer, there needs to be answer. All these billions we are spending on security. We can't we can establish drone stations in Strilaja to monitor Kaduna Abuja Road. That is, I don't understand what we are doing. We cannot fight 21st century criminality. With, with, uh, with the 20th or 19th century strategy. Hmm. All right, uh, S Senator, uh, these, these groups of people, you've talked about, of course, the, um, the Bethel, ba Bethel Baptist um, uh, kidnapping and attacks. You've talked about the Greenfield School attacks and all that. Uh, we've been hearing about, about bandits. We've heard about uh, cattle rustlers. We've heard about kidnappers in the northwestern part of Nigeria. Uh, we previously have not really heard a lot about terrorists. Uh, how come we've now moved from bandits 
to terrorists. Who are these people? You are a former senator who represented the people of Kaduna Central, so you are well aware of what's been happening. Uh, we know that in times past we've had, you know, uh, you know, uh, inter-tribal, ethnic, uh, uh, geopolitical, you know, fights and all that. So w what's really going on in Kaduna State? Does this have anything to do with the uh, farmers' headers, headers issues, uh, with the tax, you know, on, on locales and, and, and so on and so forth, you know, with, with the conflict in southern Kaduna and villages being ransacked, does this have anything to do with that? Well, um, it's important we, we try to understand the, the, the difference between these three. Farmers' headers crisis or conflicts are conflicts between uh, people who rear cattle and also farmers uh on their lands so, so that one is uh is known herders are herders they they have cattle and they move around and in the process they, they get confrontational with uh, farmers because their cattle will feed on uh on on, on on the farm on farm products now that is a different issue and they are banned and their own is not about kidnapping only they have a political agenda and they have a religious uh, uh, ingredient of their own uh, act of criminality. Uh, they go to this, they preach and they kill people and also recruit people to join them. Bandits don't recruit people to join them. They are the, they, 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 they have they have their targets that they want to achieve. And terrorists are, are out for to establish an Islamic state in Nigeria. But bandits are simply there for monetary reasons. They kill, they kidnap, they extort ransom. So it's good we try to differentiate between the two. But all of them are all uh, criminals and are also terrorists. But it's good to understand bandits who are there for, for financial reasons for, uh, for their own is uh, is about extorting money and also terrorists who who have religious inclination to what they do. So this is the issue. So in, in the in the land in the United nowadays, sometimes there are even conflicts and and confrontation between bandits and terrorists. Because uh, terrorists and bandits are called control of territories in Nigeria and parts of the state. Uh, bandits don't engage in, uh, they have no way out there to make money. Uh, terrorists are, have command and structure. Here's what it can also be. Uh, Oh, we, we apologize. Um, uh, uh, Senator, we, we're having a bit of a network issue with you. If you, you could get closer to maybe a window, an open window or something, you know, or if you could wind down your window a bit, that will help so that we can, we can get a better connection. But Senator, can you hear me, please? I can hear you very well. Okay, so please, please continue with your, your, your point. Maybe you can just uh, repeat what you just said because we had a bit of a poor connection earlier. Aha. Uh -huh. What I said... What I said was is this, this that a farmers had a crisis uh, about farmers and also headers. Headers are those who rear cattle and they engage in uh, sometimes conflicts when their cattle cross farmlands. So that's a different issue. But bandits are out to extort money by kidnapping and killing people and then collecting ransom. Uh, they, but terrorists are elements of the Boko Haram and Islam, where they engage in extortion, in uh, in uh, preaching. Senator, are you there, And please? also in pursuit of their religious rights. Okay, so so uh, these, these these current attackers uh, are, or recent attacks were said to have been perpetrated by. Terrorists, uh, is that narrative correct?
Hello? Yeah, okay, Senator, I, I, was, I was saying that the recent attacks uh, uh, were said to have been perpetrated by, by terrorists. Is that correct? Yeah, Senator, are you there, please? Okay, uh, we'll, we'll try to get back to Senator Sheikh Hussani, uh, formerly uh, representing the people of Kaduna Central um, in the Nigerian Senate. We'll take a break, and when we come back, we want to talk some more. Senator Sheikh Hussani is a leading voice, uh, especially on Twitter, as far as um, uh, the happenings in Kaduna State are concerned. He's been able to put out a lot of information. He's become a critical um, opinion stakeholder as far as this is concerned. We'll be right back and see if we can get a better connection with him. You're still watching Plus Politics. Welcome back. You're still watching Plus Politics on Plus TV Africa. And of course, uh, we've been looking at the uh, situation um, in, in Kaduna State. It's an unfolding situation, a um, uh, state that has been one of the best and most um, loved states in Nigeria, a uh, state that has harbored Nigerians from all over the country. Um, you talk about Kaduna, the city of Kaduna, you talk about Zaria, and these are very popular places. And, and of course, uh, not a few people have pointed out the fact that Kaduna State is home to quite a number of military formations. And um, if, I, if I have the time, I'll take you through uh, those military formations. But you have, of course, um, the Nigeria Defense Academy. You have formations of the Nigerian Air Force. You have formations of the Nigerian Army uh, stationed in Kaduna. Quite a number of them. That you can't even remember how crumb all of them into your head. And so one would expect um, that Kaduna State will be, will be highly secure. Um, unfortunately, it's been the theater of, um, uh, of banditry and terror attacks. We had Senator Sheo Sani, uh, who was uh, representing, who represented the people of Kaduna Central uh, at the National Assembly. We've had some network issues with him. And uh, we'll try our very best to connect back with him. But these are some things he's been saying. Uh, he also put out a statement saying, you know what, if you're traveling to, Kadu to and from Kaduna by road or by rail, um, that until you pass the villages of Rijana and uh, Katari before you know that you have made your journey, anything short of that, your life is on a scale of probability. So this is what you know they've been going through. The senator himself has also reminded us on this program how he himself was recently a survivor of a terror attack on that same train at that same spot as that which happened on Monday. And he only escaped uh, with his life. He also said something that the Zuma military, military barracks is in, in Suleja, Niger State. It's supposed to provide security along the Kaduna Abuja Road. It was attacked by bandits and six soldiers lost their lives. You know, so these are the things that we're talking about. But I'd like to bring in uh, at this point um, another guest. Uh, he's of the People's uh, Democratic Party. Um, of course, uh, he, uh, the party has criticized um, uh, the federal government without um, re restraint or refrain uh, following these attacks. And I'm talking about none other than Mr. Diron Odemi, who was a former uh, Deputy Publicity Secretary of the People's Democratic Party. Uh, Diron Odemi, good evening to you. Thank you very much for your time. Good evening, and thank you for bringing me on. All right, before we move on to an, a second topic, what are your thoughts uh, on, on the ongoing situation in Kaduna State? Uh, your party, the People's Democratic Party, of which you are a former Deputy Publicity Secretary, has um, been criticizing the Buhari-led uh, federal government. What are your thoughts, please? Is there anything that PDP has said that they are not supposed to say? This is a government that came to power on the promises to Nigerians that the issue of security will be their priority. But since they have come on board almost seven years ago now, people that have lost their lives are more than the people they used to frustrate or castigate PDP during the campaign. It's quite unfortunate that uh, the Minister for Information 
Shibla uh, Mohamed to come and tell Nigerians and blame PDP for whatever is happening in the area of security. Nigerians are not fools. I would have expected a decent government to answer up and own up that there is, there, was, there is nothing they can do again regarding the promises they made to Nigerians about security. Nobody. Even the military we are talking about, either the, the soldier, the police, the air force, who is safe in this country? Nobody. And if we are in this situation, and all what APC could do is to say, yes, nothing is happening in, in the country here. Yeah, they are on top of the situation. Upon all the money voted for security, they are still telling us that terrorism could not be fought with rigor. I think it's a shame on this country. Mm. All right, uh, and it's quite unfortunate. Mr. Demi, you, 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 indeed you've pointed out the fact that this current administration came onto power with a promise to, to right the wrongs of the People's Democratic Party uh, 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 administration where in the time of the PDP before powers rested from them, um, you know, terrorism or terrorists were planting flags in states in Nigeria like Niger State, which is now uh, said to be controlled by, by, by bandits. Does the People's Democratic Party have uh, a moral standing to criticize the APC, bearing in mind you left or handed over in Nigeria to Buhari that was almost taken over in, in the northeast by terrorists. Terrorists were planting flags and taking over SWATs, local government areas in the northeast. If you take, if you look into the statistics of what is happening now, the ratio at which bandits and terrorists are attacking people in this country, you will still give kudos to PDP that, you know, they try their best. And as a matter of fact, promise is a debt. And by the time General Buhari was coming into office, he gave the impression that as a former military head of state, as a former military man, he has the solution to the security issues in this country. And it was on that promises, it was on the basis of that, that they said they were able to win election. So if by this time you are still comparing the, time, the era of PDP to what is happening in APC, then you are not, you are not being fair to Nigerians, not only to PDP. This is not a matter of PDP. Whether you are PDP, you are NPP, or you are, it is, we are talking about life now. Whether we like it or not, the statistics of people that lost their lives during this train mishap, you know, they are human beings like you and me. It could have been anybody. So if you are not playing politics with this and blaming P P uh, the era of, uh, AP, uh, of PDP and comparing it to me, then we are not being fair. If you promise that you are coming into power and into office because you know you are capable of winning the war against terrorism in this country and you are not able to achieve that, why are you blaming PDP? Why are you comparing it after almost seven years in office? Let's be sincere. Let's be fair. The, the, there's the, no justification for that. And there's no reason for it in any way. Dear Ademi, there, there's some people who have uh, uh, alleged that um, all that is happening in, in terms of uh, whether they're bandits or terrorists or kidnappers or cattle rustlers, that all these are political motivated by by a section of the polity in nigeria that wants to bring the apc led federal government into disrepute disrepute uh, and make them unpopular just ahead of the 2023 general elections and of course uh, what, what do you say to that the genesis of this terrorism and banditry if you remember was a statement credited to the president uh, to president buari when he said if he did not win that election Monkeys and baboons will be dredged in blood. We challenge him. But, 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 Did Nigeria but, 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 take that statement? Dear Terrorism was already in Nigeria then. And it's been documented that peop, that, that statement what? didn't mean that. We are talking of the political inclination into terrorism now. What I'm trying to put across to you now is the fact that if the president said that before he came into power, then the question is, what is the genesis of terrorism? We can as well say they use terrorism as a tool through which they, they rope a kind of a propaganda against PDP to come to office. If you come into office through propaganda, you will need a lot of propaganda to sustain yourself. But that is exactly what is, what is happening to them now. 
They cannot use the same propaganda they used to come into office to sustain the lies and, you know, the blackmail they, do, they did to PDP to win election. So where is, the, where is the correlation? And if they have the fact that PDP or whoever are the sponsors of a Boko Haram and terrorism, they are in government, they are in power. What has stopped them from making arrests? What has, they, has stopped them from, you know, uh, declaring them or making... Or, or pronounce them publicly. It's as if they don't have the solution to the problem, and what they can do is just to blame whoever, especially PDP. Okay. Uh, um, wh what would the People's Democratic Party, in fact, I should ask it this way, does the People's Democratic Party have what it takes to turn Nigeria's fortunes around and fix the security problem in the country? It is our strategy and it's going to be part of the key issues that we are going to throw to Nigerians and let them know that having stayed out of office for almost eight years now, we are more than prepared. We have our strategy. And by the time we start our real campaign, we will tell Nigerians how we want to solve that particular problem. But if we start disclosing it now, it's possible for APC to steal, you know, our manifesto and ideas. And that is the key word and that is the strategy we want to use to dislodge them in 2023. So we have the strategy. Uh, 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 does the PDP have, because of course so these things will not be cast in stone. These things will be dependent on who emerges as the flag bearer of the People's Democratic Party at the end of its primary. I think process is starting in April, ending in June by the INEC uh, uh, schedule of activities. Um, if the People's Democratic Party is able to produce a candidate, uh, a flag bearer, and that flag bearer wins the 2023 elections um, then, of course, we would judge that person based on their credentials. So, looking at the names that have been coming out, looking at the candidates or the aspirants that have been buying forms or that are having forms bought for them, because that's what's happening now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you are laughing. I'm, 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 so, I'm, 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 I'm intrigued to know it. It, it seems funny to you. <laughs> it seems funny. But, but um, do you think these names we have seen, we're hearing that Tiko Abubakar, we had um, you know, the likes of uh, uh, former House of Reps uh, um, uh, uh, speaker and governor of Sokoto State, Tambua. We heard the likes of um, uh, Saraki. We heard the likes of Atiku Abubakar. We heard the likes of Yen Songbike uh, and so on and so forth. Do these aspirants have what it takes to fix the insecurity problem in Nigeria? You should congratulate the PDP for, for having eminent personalities in their fold to govern Nigeria. You see, uh, all the names you have mentioned, can you tell me which of, which of them is not capable to rule this country successfully? They are men of timber and caliber and people with experience, people who know Nigeria inside out, people who at a point in time have been in office and they know if there is any mistake, they know where the mistake is. And in PDP today, there has been a committee of 31, 31 eminent personalities to look at the zoning arrangement. But so far, if we base the candidature on the number of people that has come out to obtain forms, we are happy that not a single one of them is not capable. Hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, but these are people who have been in government in one form or the other, and uh, we are where we are today. Of course. The APC used propaganda against, uh, against PDP to get into office. But Nigerians have realized that mistake. They have seen that APC lied to them with about their manifesto, about the promises, and about what they are not capable of well, Mr. doing. Mr. Day, Mr. Day, I mean, things were not rosy then either. In 2015, things were not rosy. People were not, were not, were not happy. Compare, can you compare what is happening now to what is happening then? Okay, is so it the, the issue of uh, fuel or the economy that you want to talk about? We are talking of security. It's a failure. We are talking of economy. It's a failure. So tell me, are, are we not better as Nigerians during PDP era than now? Well, of course we are. Okay, so 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 so, how did these individuals you're talking about um, uh, perform? Can you can you? I wouldn't want. I don't know you. I don't think you want to mention or single anyone out. 
But did they, any of them, perform, you know, uh, to the extent that they kept Nigerians, left Nigerians happy at the end of their tenure? We, we, are, we are comparing the era of PDP to what is happening now. That means during Obasanjo era, during Jonathan's era, Nigerians are better. And these are the operators at that, as at that time. Jonathan did not claim to be an encyclopedia of knowledge. He employed people who knows a lot about economy. And he was able to hold on and sustain the economy of Nigeria. There was no sovereign. People were happy. And the same thing that, you know, we happen when we get there because we have realized our mistakes wherever. And we have designed a strategy which is going to be part of the manifesto we are going to show to the people when the campaign, when campaign starts. 